He's angry about mortgages. It's Angry Mortgage. He's swearing. He's cursing loud. He's old. He's opinionated. And he's been doing this so damn long. This program is about mortgages, and this is mortgage advice, but the advice may not apply to your situation. Contact licensed mortgage professionals for specific recommendations before you make decisions about mortgages. You may not agree with Ron, but if you don't, uh, he thinks you're wrong. Oh, and did we say there is a lot of swearing? And we're back. It's Angry Mortgage. We're on the air. It is the uh, after New Year's edition. New Year's is over for those of you. Uh, like, I don't think anybody's still hung over. I mean, this is this is after New Year's. Like, everybody should be fine. Everybody should be fine. Uh, to, joining us today is Michelle. Michelle works. Uh, J Jan is sick. Like, I'm reading all these stories about how everybody's sick. Everybody's sick. Right everybody's now. sick. Yeah, like, universally, a, yeah. everybody is sick. Okay, it's crazy. Like I was, I read a story online today that they're calling it the 30-day cough. And they say that there's people in North America and lots of people in North America and for some reason in, in the UK, starting in Europe, where they're just coughing and lose their voice and cough and cough for like nobody knows even what the hell it is. Whether it's Apparently it's this RSV virus that's attacking people's lungs and some several people are getting sick right now. And also with a stomach bug. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the stomach thing. Yes, absolutely. I've heard of the stomach thing too. Like my uh, my wife's sister got the stomach thing. Her daughter got the stomach thing. Like, um, oh, by the way, like everybody in my family's old, right? So the daughter's <laughs> old, okay? But um, yeah, what the fuck? Like, it's bizarre. Okay, everybody is sick as hell. Anyway, Jan's off. She'll be okay by um, next podcast. But Michelle is kind enough. Michelle works with us at the brokerage. She's kind enough to fill in today. She'll do a great job. And uh, anyway, we're back. It's after New Year's. 20 fucking 24 has started. It okay, has. We're here. Um, Jesus, 2024. I actually didn't know whether I'd make it to 2024. <laughs> when I was young, I never thought. I would make it all the way, but here we're at. Here we are. We're here. Going our, strong. Go. I don't know how fucking strong I'm going, to be honest with you. I think you're you're fine, but I, I, I don't really know how strong I'm going some days. All right. So what's in the news? The news today is about this. You know, there's this guy, Pierre Polyev, the conservative guy. He's putting out these videos all the time. He puts out these videos on Twitter. I guess you got to call it X. Sorry, Elon. Um got called x now but he puts it out and it gets then it gets shared around with millions of people and pretty soon it goes viral sometimes it goes all over the world and he's talking about something he calls debt a nation like debt but like not detonation like a bomb but detonation spelled like debt yeah you know like debt like we're all in debt okay so it's a worthy topic uh, because i'm in the mortgage business and the nature and so is michelle and all our work here at butler mortgage is about debt. That's what we're doing. That's we're what we we're do. giving huge loans. Guess what a mortgage is? It's a huge, huge loan, always secured against real estate. And damn, there's debt out there. A lot like, of it. A lot of it. And you know, the mortgage. When I think when I, you know, it seemed like the whole mortgage debt in Canada. I just think about residential. I don't think about commercial or all the rest of it. But it seemed like all of the residential mortgage debt in Canada suddenly took this incredible leap from about was kicking around 1.3, 1.4 about five years ago. Boom. Sorry. Trillion. By the way, that's not billion. That's trillion. Like about 1.2 to 1.4, you know, gradually got there. And then boom, it's $2 trillion. It's like, <laughs> just like that. All right. Like it just went crazy. Okay. Um, well, we've seen it. We've seen the prices go up. We've seen it. See it all change. See it all change. So, 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 Pure is talking about in his debt a nation video. Uh, talks about how it's bad. How debt's bad. How uh, particularly government debt is bad. Okay, it is. It is, and it's getting worse. It's not getting better. It's not getting better. Um, and there's a lot of reasons. Um, you know, and when we talk about government debt, we should realize that. We all owe it, right? 
Like we, we, all, we all owe. Uh, taxpayer is the backup of the debt. I mean, you know, it, like you figure when you get a mortgage, your ability to pay the mortgage is based on your your income, right? Yeah, that's right. Based on your income. So what about the national debt? What about, because you know, when we talk about all these Canada five, you know, we talk about bond yields all the time. So what we're talking about is that the government of Canada issues bonds. They do. Okay? And the bonds get sold to others and then they come due and they got to be rolled over. And if you got a five-year bond, at the end of the five years, you got to roll it over. Okay, you got a one-year, whatever. Um, somebody else got to agree to take it again or you got to get somebody else to take it. And that's our debt. It's it's these bonds, these Canada bonds that we keep talking about the yields all the time because yields push rates. So it grows and... How do people keep track of that? How do we even, how do, if you're an average person, how would you ever keep track of that? Well, I mean, that's just it, right? Like, where does an average consumer go to find out this information? Yeah, it ain't easy. You're right. It ain't easy. So it's not like they make it readily available for you and, yeah, you know, no, send you an email no, every no, week no, and no, say, no. hey, here's what the government is doing. You're so right. Like, there's no, uh, there's no like uh, mass text that goes out to every taxpayer in Canada every, uh, a month that says, "Hey, here's where we're at now. We're fucked." Uh, <laughs> you never get that. Never comes out. So, so one of the easy ways there you, you can you can dig through and find it. But like the way that it becomes public most often is that at least once a year, and really quarterly, but definitely once a year, it gets well publicized. The finance minister has a budget. And when Which the budget they comes out, often don't follow. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can't you can't be sure that it'll work out. That's for damn right? damn rights. But uh, they do have to tell you what their projections are. Yeah. So, and that's when you hear about the debt. Right. That's when you hear like she'll announce uh, Christopher Freeland will announce uh, a forty-five billion dollar deficit. <laughs> deficit. It's a deficit. <laughs> like, in other words, we're going to bring in uh, less taxes, spend more. And the more we're spending is about $45 billion. Right, our estimate. yeah. So it's going, we're, the debt grows. So that's one of the best ways that the public can figure out, wait a minute, we're, 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 we're going backwards like on a daily basis, you know, like, because we are, right? We take in not enough taxes and we pay it. So what's the answer? If we should be, like Pierre is telling us we should be worried. You know, the whole video is talking about that because massive debt, Drives inflation. That's right. Uh, so there's a lot of people want to argue with that, but it's hard to argue with it. It, it is. really is. Yeah. It's hard. Okay. Because massive debt means you've spent more than you brought in, but mostly the problem is the spending. The like spending. Spend, spend, people, spend. And people don't adjust their spending. And governments don't adjust their spending. That's right. That's for damn sure. Okay. So should we be worried? Look, I, I can't, we can't worry about what the, what the government does. It's ridiculous. Like people like us sitting here, we can't. We're, you know, we can oppose it. We can yell about it. We can bitch about it online like I do all the time. But we can't actually fix it, right? We can't. And it'll keep you up at night if you worry about it. <laughs> it will. It will. And it, But the main thing is we can't affect it. No. Okay. We could try to get new governments in and we get a chance to do that every four years or so. But, you know, it's nothing we can really do. We can talk about it. It's about it. But in our personal lives and with Canadians' personal debt, that's a whole other thing, right? That's right. Uh, that's different. That's what we do in our business when we do residential mortgages. That's right. And the issue becomes, it grows and it grows and it grows. We got to realize that 45% of Canadians don't even have a mortgage, that's right? right? We yeah. always got to acknowledge that. The people who own homes, 45% of them don't have a mortgage, all right? Um, now, they fall into the category of the pretty old, um, a lot of those folks, some of the folks fall in the category of really rich. Like there is some really rich people, right? Oh, you yeah. know this. And then there's all kinds of communities across Canada that aren't like Toronto and Vancouver and Calgary and Montreal. Okay. There's little towns and there's rural communities and it's cheap. It's like, a lot cheaper to live. But it, it's not as cheap as it was mm -hmm. because some of these places have caught the Toronto virus. You know, like you guys, I pity people in the Maritimes, you know, in New Brunswick and in Nova Scotia. Uh, you're not supposed to say Maritimes, you're supposed to call it Atlantic. 
I get to keep get corrected on that all the time. <laughs> I'm an old guy, so I've been calling it the Maritimes forever. But in the modern world, you got to call it Atlantic provinces. But these poor folks in, and I mean it seriously, I feel sorry for them. People are born and raised in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. In 2020, people from Ontario were, you know, COVID, whatever. They were moving. They were moving. Drove up and, the market. And, and they drove the market for the, they drove the prices through the roof. And then the furtherance of the event, Toronto virus, okay? Mm-hmm. People from Toronto would come in and buy houses to rent them because they'd say, holy shit, this house is cheap. Uh, like, uh, this house cost a million bucks in Toronto. They, I can buy here for two seventy five. So I got to buy a bunch. I'm going to buy them. four. <laughs> I'll buy them all. Okay. Like, and then of course they, they got to raise the rents. That's right. Because traditionally rents in Atlantic Canada were very reasonable. Well, you know, people still had to you had to make money to pay them. I mean, they, you know, they, I wouldn't say they were reasonable compared with batshit crazy Toronto rents. Okay. Yeah. And now they raise all the rents. Like, All the rents have been raised, yeah. Jesus. Just... And affordability has become an issue in Atlantic You're Canada. from the rock originally, I am, right? I am. Like, you're from the rock. That's Newfoundland. Yeah. All anybody listening from America, okay? <laughs> uh, we just normal people call it the rock. You people call it the rock. We call it the rock we as well. We call it the rock, exactly. So It is a massive rock. <laughs> so have, have, have prices gone up? Oh, extremely, extremely. extremely. Like okay. um, one of my friends is a realtor in Newfoundland, and he actually just listed uh, a property not far from my, where my parents are for 550000 which you don't see. That's like $3 million in the raw Newfoundland, right? right? Like, holy That's a lot shit. of money in Newfoundland. A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> holy mackerel. Yeah, it's a virus. Yeah, I can only describe it as a virus, right? Mm-hmm. It's the idea that, People have had this huge run-up in prices in Toronto. They got equity in their homes. They start to think, I'd like to own some rental property. You actually can't afford it here. That's right. Like a shitbox condo costs like 550000 and yeah. more. So you say, oh, no, I, I can buy two houses in Newfoundland or have Moncton or something. Outside of Moncton, I'll That's drive right. a little bit outside of Moncton. There's two houses. I have two whole houses. And that acreage, I can rent out. And everything else. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, it is it is the Toronto disease. So. Uh, not not great for those people. That's for goddamn sure. Gold uh, as well. Gold. They've been finding gold in Newfoundland. You're kidding. I didn't so, know, know that. Gold. You know, they've been finding a lot of gold. So that's wow. that's naturally drawing people to the island as well. So a lot of people are moving east. Okay. But the bottom line is then if you want to have that, you, you, your, your realtor friend says selling a house for $500,000 plus in Newfoundland, mm-hmm. that's going to need a mortgage, right? Nobody's oh, yeah. going to pay cash for that. That's right. So all of a sudden the mortgages are growing yep. in Newfoundland. In Newfoundland. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, so the mortgage growth, again, 45% of the pop of, of residential homes don't have a mortgage. Some of those have a line of credit that's unused, but um, there's no mortgage. So, but there, there may be in places where it doesn't really... It's not that impactful. Don't, I'm not running you down, Brandon, Manitoba. I'm not running you down, uh, you know, Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Like, I'm not beating you up, Prince Rupert in British Columbia. I'm not. I'm really not, okay? But, you know, the, the houses were cheaper historically, and some of them, there's no mortgage. Just, okay. got, just got paid off. Um, no, nor am I beating up on all the, all the, you know, people living on farm properties all over Canada. In many cases, there's no, no mortgages on those properties. And a lot of people in those areas, they never move. No, no, they never move. In some places, you're right. People just, they move into their house when they get married and they they yeah, never move. That's okay. right. So, but the people who have mortgages, and that's 55% of homeowners, uh, the mortgages have gotten way fucking bigger. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> like really, really bigger. And that's, is that a debt bomb? Um, well, we're experiencing it right now, right? We're experiencing yeah. it through renewals. That's right. So just to quickly touch on renewals, you know, the, the variable rates have been way high now for it's almost a year. It's mm-hmm. almost a full year that they've been at, at like in the 6% range. That's okay. right. So here's my thought. For those people who had, because people ask me all the time, Ron, when's this going to blow up? When's this just going to blow right the fuck up, okay? With these high, high renewals that are coming in. big And the big change that people experienced on variable. Again, there's a bunch of banks where they didn't raise the payment. Their right. interest went up. The amortization went up, and sometimes the mortgage started to grow because the payment never changed. Although apparently some of those payments are changing. Some of the payments are changing. People are getting letters, and people are being contacted and saying we got to take action. And there has there's like trigger points which you actually have to start increasing your payment. 
So, but there's been a couple banks, Scotia Bank and National Bank, where every time variable went up, Bank of Canada raised, payment went up. Payment go up, yeah. And this is where we have a live experiment to see the effect of renewals, because that was effectively a renewal, right? I mean, if your payment changed, your interest rate went up with those variable rate mortgages. That's the same as if you hit a renewal and your payment went up because the rate went up. And people are somehow functioning, you know, they're getting by. I mean, you don't, Scotia doesn't have any more uh, default than anybody else has. Okay. I mean, their, their default rate is the same as any other bank. Um, banks that haven't changed the, the payments on the mortgages. So there's a bit of a lesson there. What the lesson is, is that probably people are going to muddle through, you know, when people, when these rate increases happen, I'm not in any way, shape or form suggesting it's not a disaster because you figure if your payment goes up $1,200 a month, that's a fucking that's disaster. That's a lot. It's yeah, a lot. it's a disaster. Yeah, okay? it's, a it's lot. terrible. I mean, I just went through that myself because I just had to do a mortgage renewal back in November. Oh, yeah. And obviously I shopped around. Well, yeah, yeah. You, you had access to good rates. Yes, <laughs> right? that's true. November was a bad time, though, It right? was. It was a very bad time because the fixed rates were high, you know, so I ended up, I did take a, a variable rate in hopes that in 2024, the rates will start to come down. And then, you know, in six months to a year from now, I could refinance and get a better rate. Yeah, I mean, if they, you know, we'll touch on that later in the show. But yeah, they will, they will eventually come down, you're mm-hmm. right. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, and so that impacts on your whole Your whole life, life. right? Yeah. Everything. You're spending everything. You have to adjust in, in accordance. Now my mortgage payment is $800 a month higher. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, yeah. Okay. So that's the story of the next year is this continual grind of this, you know, debt because interest rates are not going down right away. Uh, the, some rates are coming down, but they're, it's not going to just flip overnight. That's right. And prices aren't coming down. You know, one thing about inflation, prices don't all of a sudden just reverse. Start no, they, they don't, they stop going up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there's some adjustments in grocery, like in the summer, some of the fruits and vegetable prices go down or whatever, but, you know, there's some changes, yeah. but by and large, once a box of cookies goes up, it never goes down. That's right. You've never seen it. No. Nope. You bought some cookies in your day. Not I bought some cookies right. in my day. They never go down once they're up. So there we go. Um, that's the debt bomb. Now, this this problem for people with mortgages is renewals come up and, and the, actually the peak mortgage renewal years are actually 25 and 26. 24 is going to be big, but the real monster years are 25 and 26. They're absolutely huge for mortgage renewals. And will that debt bomb go off? I don't think so, but uh, because I I think people can adjust and and people will still have a lot of equity in their homes. Well, and people will take on extra jobs if necessary. You know, they'll take on part-time jobs on top of their full-time job. You know, they'll do all kinds of things to... Rent in, rooms out, rent, rent basement rooms. out, there's whatever. A, yeah, yeah, there's lots you can do to help try and mitigate, I guess, the increases. Yep. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's still... It's very expensive for people to live. It is. It's ferocious. Um and and you know everybody feels it. Well, not everybody. The very rich don't give a shit. They okay? don't. You know, I don't think Galen West like, gives you know, a shit. The okay. average Canadian earning thirty five, forty grand a year, they care. <laughs> well, I think they're drowning. If they're drowning. 40. Debt. I mean, yeah. like uh, you got to live way somewhere super cheap. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you get. I was having a conversation with a business colleague the other day, and he said, "You know, I think that to live quite comfortably, to live just comfortably, not high on the hog, but." Just to take your two weeks vacation outside of Canada a year, um, just to go to the movies well, twice a month, once a month, just to live it, what you would classify as a normal life, mm-hmm. you know, go out to dinner once in a while. He says, I think you need a family income of between 150 and 165. Yeah. Okay. Nowadays. You does do. that sound right? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It sounds right. You know, before we could live off in, of, in Toronto, you know, like in yeah, expensive places, yeah. Vancouver, Toronto, Calgary. You know, I mean, you don't need that on the East Coast to live, right? right but right. like, if you're in a major, you may someday, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, if Newfoundland is five hundred grand for a house, then yeah, yeah, we need it someday. But everything is on the rise all the way across the country. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes in twenty twenty four. I guess. Yeah. Well, it's 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 going to be something similar. I mean, uh, but yeah, that 
Will that debt bomb go off? I think it's not going to be cataclysmic, but I think it's going to be a slow grind on people's ability to spend. Yeah. You know, and that, that's, that's... People how, need to adjust their spending. They do, you know. Um, but that's not good for the economy. It's not. That is that is what... This is our friend Tiff Macklem. I'm not your friend, you fat <laughs> bastard. Don't call me your friend anymore. All right, Tiff. We'll call you. Yeah, yeah I know you don't like me. Okay. He really doesn't know me from Adam, but that's fine. Um, so he might know you now. No, he doesn't know me. <laughs> I, I, he does not. That's the one thing I've, I, I really do believe that. Um, you know, you, you might be a, a very minor mortgage celebrity, but really, people don't know who the fuck you are. Yeah, okay? I mean, not, and not in the real world. Uh, anyway, so we have been experiencing the good news. Uh, what I think would be the good news story in 2024 is we will be exp we have been experiencing the falling of fixed rates. Okay, so we talked about the other the other show. We talked about uh, we hit 499 on a five year fixed. It's below five. That was on a high ratio mortgage, like specialized. That's just for purchase, just for. But now we have seen uh, 499 on a conventional mortgage. Right. Big ones, like big ones where the banks are, and that's a bank mortgage, folks. That's like a big five bank mortgage. So I don't know, I got this just the other day. I got, um, somebody said to me, uh, well, look, here's my, showed it to me. He, he, he took a picture of it, sent it to me. He said, look, here's my uh, CIBC renewal. And everything starts with a six. Something mm -hmm. started with an eight. Okay, wow. like a one to six month open was like an eight yeah okay they, 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 they right. offer it they, they <laughs> offer it but they sure as fuck make sure you won't take it yeah. right i mean you're not taking it so but every single one started with this there's sevens eight sixes nothing said five yeah um which was kind of shitty okay i thought that was a shitty move if it I see it. but you know but thanks maybe you got that a month ago maybe rates were higher a month ago who knows when it got that yeah the one thing that was cut off was the date i couldn't see the date on it uh, i didn't ask but i just looked at it and he says then he says, Ron, I have called other banks. I've looked at other banks' rates online. By the way, that's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Do not go to the bank's website and look at their rates. Those are the worst, worst rates they put out, okay? They're terrible. But he said, I've looked at all the rates, and they're all about the same as this. Well, I just actually uh, sent him the note, uh, just, I think just the other day, yesterday, I sent him the new note. Hey, yeah, we've got, it'll be, it'll be much less. You know, that with us would be like, through a big bank. By the way, when I when people say, well, why don't you name the big bank, you fucker? Okay, well, it's like this. They don't want us to advertise their name in this thing because they offer different rates to different folks. Well, and okay? it depends on the folk too, right? It really depends. on Your rate depends on a few things. One's your credit capacity. Sure. Your ability to pay it back, yeah. right? So you're just going online and finding different rates online. You don't know if you're qualifying for those rates. And the other big thing, the bank doesn't want their name mentioned because they're sending out renewals too. Of course, right? they're setting up renewals and two months not, in advance. Three and you know what? And and some of the, well, and some of those renewals are not that favorable because some of the mortgages are very small. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I talk about this five percent, a five percent rate in a five year fixed, um, at at four nine nine, or five oh nine, or whatever the case may be, that's a big mortgage. Yep. It's like an eight hundred thousand dollar mortgage. Okay, which ain't many. Mm -hmm. okay. You're not and looking at you know 150, 125 thousand. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not that. So I don't want they, you know I don't want to put it out there because then then everybody says, well, yeah, he Ron said that the bat bank at this rate. And okay, because it's situational. Okay, yeah. like you said, it's about your credit capacity. It's about a million other things. It's about your actual mortgage application. Are you eligible for that rate? But I'll sure as hell say this. I think anybody who's doing a serious look for a mortgage renewal on a five-year fixed could find a rate in the fives. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And I'm like, we're low fives on everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like on, you know, five, three, nine, five, you know, it's low. Okay. That's right. Three years come down too. Like we looked at a three-year the other day. Now you might say, well, why is three-year always more expensive than five-year? It, it isn't always. Okay. But it has been lately. Simple reason is that... When these bond these bond yields are favor the five year, so here's the theory behind it: the bond traders believe that the Bank of Canada will drop rates eventually. 
Okay, and it will they will keep dropping rates. I saw a note from TD Bank that says we believe in 2025, the Bank of Canada, who is now five yep. percent, will drop all the way to two two five. Oh wow! Okay, it's two seventy two seven five off. So if you're a bond trader and you're trying to you know, calculate that issue into your decisions, then you have to say, well, I guess we got a five year risk here, and it looks like it's going to be a lot less. You know, we got to project five years. Looks like it's going to be a lot less in 18 months. So let's, you know, produce. We're going to trade according to that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Whereas a three year has a much lower, shorter time frame, right? Mm -hmm. So that bond trader has to say, well, but my rates, you know, the Bank of Canada rate's going to come down, but I've got a shorter term. If the bank, if it takes 16 months for the Bank of Canada to drop that all the way down to 225, mm -hmm. that's half, you know, then I've, I'm close to halfway through my three-year term, okay? Right. So I can't be as aggressive as the five-year bond, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the concept behind it. But we had a three-year offering came through, again, conventional, so it's not high ratio, it's not CMHC insured. Came through, I think it was, I think William said to me it was like um, 524, 519. So that's okay. a better three-year rate yeah, that we've seen for better. a long time. And so those fixed rates are falling, okay? Um, not not variable. You know, my, my said it constantly, I've said it on all the shows, I say it all the time. I don't think we'll see the Bank of Canada cut till the summer. Yeah. That's my opinion, okay? All right, so that's that's the good news on rates. Rates, what we are gonna see by, I'm gonna tell you, by April, May, we're gonna see more rates, more rates in the 4% range. We're gonna be talking a lot about 4% and up, you know, 4%, 459, 469, 489. We're going to be talking about those kind of rates uh, in for all every product, uh, for and not one than two year, but like for a lot of products. We're going to be talking about that in uh, March, April, May. And you got to remember as well, like pre COVID, rates were around this, like this average. So where the market was still very healthy, right? Yeah, 2019. Um, although housing was actually slowing down at the end of 2019 before mm -hmm. COVID hit, um, like sales were down, prices were really plateaued. Um, but yeah, rates were going up. Yep. Rates, uh, we had a point in, I think it was November of 2019, where rates broke into the force. They hadn't been in the force for a long time. Right. Okay, and then crazy COVID time happened and then the shit hit the fan and rates went to zero and you know, we've, we've seen what happened since. I haven't seen the, like cheap money like that on the market for a very long time. Oh, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> uh, COVID, COVID. I mean, when I bought my first toes, my I had a five-year fixed at that time, and my rate was over 6%. Wow. And that was yeah. in like 2002, I believe. Like a long, long time long, ago. Long, long time. Long time ago when I first got, when I got my first house, I think it was, I think it was in the sevens or something, yeah. yeah. But the price of that house was so cheap. Yeah, cheap yeah. I mean, I bought my first house for one ninety, right? See, so. it's so <laughs> cheap. I mean, yeah. like that's, that's always the key is the, the multiple of income. What it is, like, you know, yeah, it's always the key. Okay, so we got viewer listener mail. We got some mail. Get the questions for me, Michelle. What, what I, are the listeners asking us? Well, the listeners are asking that they keep hearing that you cannot time the real estate market. Do you feel like this is true? You know, you hear that all the t time. <clears throat> you know, you go you know, go listen to these real estate shows and some asshole will always show up and say, and male or female asshole, take your pick, okay? Some asshole will always say, you can't time the real estate market. The best time is now. The best time <laughs> is all. Now. The best time to buy is always right now. <laughs> <laughs> because if you stay in the house for 20 years, we know you're going to do it. Okay. So my, my overarching view of that comment is, that whoever says that should fuck themselves, right. okay? Because it's fucking stupid, all right? Yes, you, it's hard to time the market. Like, it's hard to say that, oh, I know that this day is the lowest point in the cycle. That's impossible, for Christ's sakes, okay? Yeah. That, you just catch lucky if you catch that. But I can, you can tell when prices are way too fucking high. Like Spring every, market. <laughs> well, no, but, every, but every, you remember every time we looked at a price in 2021, which was always bid up. It was always over asking, over right? Asking. And we looked at some of the, some of them were 300,000 over asking, 400,000 over asking. Every single thing was over asking. And rem we, we remember it clearly. We would look at the listing and say, who the fuck would pay that much for that dump? 
or even or it's a nice house but who the fuck would pay that that's and then, nuts then you see okay. the sold sign go up and it's you know oh. <laughs> a bidding war and there's 25 offers and oh, yeah so my belief is that was a bad time to buy <laughs> that, that's yeah. a shitty time to buy when fomo is like a um just crazy town okay and people are do, like there's a sign people are doing silly shit that's right okay and then the, but then people jump back on me and say oh but wait ron you forget like in uh, 2022 the market was down and then it came back to life and some people bought then and okay fine guess what it's gone back down again okay. so all those people who bought in spring of this year mm -hmm. okay their house is worth less than what they paid for it. That's right. Okay. Almost exclusively. And there's still lots of people from 2020, 2021 who bought their house is worth less today. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now, I emphasize this. It's impossible to pick that magic date when it's the absolute lowest. But I think if you see prices going down. It's a good and, time to buy. <laughs> well, but but it may also be a good time to keep watching. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Let's, let's keep watching. I mean, they might not be finished yet, okay? Uh, but yeah, I think we can pretty much say that a shitty time to buy is what everybody's offering 300 over over asking. Yeah, and that's because right. the truth is today, all those people, houses worth less. And now you can see as well that realtors have shifted <laughs> kind of their their strategy. So, you know, before they were kind of under listing and creating the, these bidding wars, now they're over listing slightly. Really? I don't know. I'm not that close to that marketplace. So maybe you're closer. What, what do you think that's going on? I believe it's to gain traction, right? Because they want a certain price mm -hmm. and realtors have to change their strategy when it comes to selling properties in this type of a market. When it switches to a buyer's market, mm -hmm. you need to you need to change up your strategy. Well, the truth is I can, I'm, I'm going to cover that towards the end of the show, but I, I, I can introduce you to some realtors on TikTok and Reels who are saying crazy shit, okay? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 they, they may not be that busy realtors. But they're saying some crazy shit. So probably we got like another it's, question. Always, it's, always it's always a good time it's always, to buy. <laughs> it's always a good time to buy. Yeah, and not really. No. What else? We, what is another so question? So the next question is my bank says that my ratios don't work. So I cannot get the home improvement loan on my house. What's up with that? Well, that's the debt ratio story. So, uh, you know, we're sort of getting into the weeds on mortgage math. But the simple reality is, is that the bank, when the, any mortgage application, the bank analyzes or we analyze, what is your outgo? Like, what are all your debts? What are your credit card payments? What are your taxes? What are your, like your property taxes, you know, throw in a little bit of utilities and look at what your new mortgage payment would be. And it's a really important to understand. There's a stress test. Right. For a bank, there's a 2% 2%. stress test. So we got to pretend that you're actually paying more than you actually would be by 2%. So even if the rate's five we're pretending you're paying seven yeah when we do all these calculations we add up all the debts add up the new mortgage payment add up the bigger mortgage payment if you want an extra loan want a new loan for renovation or whatever want to increase your mortgage look at that higher payment throw in your debts car loan whatever some property taxes and then we have a, a ratio that comes out it says okay if they're paying out this much and their income is that much x versus y What's that ratio? That's called a debt ratio. Right. Okay. And yeah, sometimes it's too high. You get turned down. And do you find now that, you know, the stress test is making it harder and harder for people to qualify? That's been true. That has been true. Um, and it will continue to be true. Because some of the people we've talked about, we talked about a few minutes ago, that some people have started to take on some side gigs. Okay. Um you can't count some of those side gigs sometimes into, right. your, into your income. So that's that. But the stress test, yes, the stress test is a mortgage killer in, in a lot of cases for a lot of loans. So when the bank says your ratios are out, by the way, and says you can't get your home improvement loan, you shouldn't just give up. There's other places it's you can go, way. other ways you can people you can talk to. Talk to us. We're not afraid to talk. But it generally means that your income is particularly. When we throw in the stress test, your income is not adequate to cover all these debts. Right. We're not talking about it being 100%, okay? But we're supposed to come in at like 44, 46. We've got to be in that range, 46%. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. That's it. Okay, it's it's really impossible. Very, very hard today to get a bank mortgage for more than that. Right. 
What else we got? Okay, next question. I keep seeing more and more listings for power of sale and foreclosure. Is this growing? And what is it? It's a good question. That's a smart question because you do notice it. If because you know there's people who pour over the multiple listings, right? You oh, know, yeah. you just go on House Sigma and it's just go down a, a rabbit just, hole. Just go down a <laughs> rabbit hole looking at these friggin' listings. Okay, yeah. and yeah, you will see. You absolutely will see. You know, this being offered. It's not a, the vendor. You look up the vendor, and it'll say, "Well, this is being offered by a bank or." XYZ company and you know it comes to be known that it's in power of sale. So what power, what is power of sale? Power of sale is when people can't pay their mortgage and a legal action is launched to take the house away, the, the actual formal title of the house, away from the owner and give it to the lender who is has got the debt, who's got the mortgage. And then okay. they can resale, like resale. And then they offer it, the lender offers it for sale. So it's very rigid. The lender must offer it for sale. They must use the average of two appraisals. You do this. I do. It's part of your job. So, you know, it's got to be the average of two appraisals. It's got to be, you know, multiple listed. It, it has to be multiple listed at the average of the two appraisals. Um, you have to tr- try to get the best return for everybody involved. Right. But why is there more? Well, here's what I'll tell you. If you really looked into that, subject and yes there is more there's more on a percentage basis there's more on a real number basis sure absolutely when you dig into it you see there's actually few for the, for the number of bank mortgages in canada there's not that many bank mortgages in under power of sale right what you see is a lot of private mortgages like it's a human being's name or it's a corporation's name or it's like a numbered cor- or corporation, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Ontario Limited, or Canada Limited, and then, or you'll see like an actual mortgage company, but not one of the banks. It's one of the private lending companies, and a lot of times it's construction too or renovation. Yeah. Okay. And so, do you think that's you know appraisal based as well? Because we've seen appraisals come down significantly over the last. Six oh yeah, months. we're gonna we're gonna yeah, we're gonna talk about the wacky appraisal thing in a second but um yeah um absolutely um it is what but what it is really based on is that these houses were under some sort of renovation right. or some sort of construction and it, the construction cost ran away from them the interest rates ran away from them and or it was mismanaged whatever you want to call it and boom trouble okay yeah so that's what happened uh, you know we see there is a growth in this area, particularly in Vancouver, Toronto, some little bit Montreal, but in Toronto, big, Southwest Ontario, big growth in power sale numbers, but not really from banks. Right. Okay. Really from projects that failed, ideas that failed. There's a flip that's failed. Like I'm going to buy this house. I'm going to paint it. I'm going to put an Ikea kitchen in it really quick in the course of six or eight months. So I'm going to make a big return. Well, if the prices have dropped, you're not going to, you're, you're underwater now. Yeah. You're in trouble. You can't make, you can't do that thing anymore. That's okay. Right. So we see a lot of the power sales and foreclosures we see. There are always people who didn't pay, but it might not just be that they're an ordinary family living in that home. It may be that it's some sort of a construction, renovation, flip. Right. And those people are in trouble. Yeah. And that, that actually is happening. Absolutely. So what would be your advice for those people who are doing these building constructions? Like, Well, first of all, mitigate? don't fucking do it. You should have <laughs> st- not done it a year ago. Like, I mean, like I'm talking to my buddy who's just, fi- he's just finished. He's rich. Okay. But uh, you're where you see the appraisal. You're seeing the appraisal yourself and they they finished it and it's fucking beautiful. It is. Okay. It's a gorgeous house. Uh, but you know, he said himself, God damn, he said the prices of stuff, construction materials and stuff has ran away. Skyrocketed. It just yeah. ran away. And, yeah. you know, it's just like, it's my house and I got money. So I tended to pick good stuff. And sometimes I even upgraded the good stuff midway. Okay. Right. And, you know, so it's ended up costing that. He's rich. Okay. He's fine. But like, if you're um, not rich, building your own house is a dangerous goddamn idea. Okay, Especially because, now. Because it takes building time. Material. All that stuff takes time. Market shifts, construction products shift, labor costs shift, interest rates shift. You're vulnerable while yeah. it's being built. And, you know, you got to be able to handle that. So my advice is just don't do it. 
Okay, anybody who says, hey, maybe I want to buy a piece of land and build my own house. No, don't fucking do it right now. Don't it's, even think it's about it. It's funny okay? that you say that because I just had a call from a friend last night. There's 286 acres up north for sale. And he's like, I think I want to buy this land. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, well. Okay, like, you know, as long as you're willing to go through pain and torture and it's going to be awful, I guess you could. But, like, you know, that's my, my – so, yes, there's more power sales and – it's um, it's but it's not as bad as people think. It's not like ordinary people are getting house sold out from under them. It's, right. it's a lot of other stuff. Yeah, okay? and probably if a house is under renovation and it didn't work out, you should probably not buy that house mm-hmm. because that's going to be just more trouble for you. Oh, absolutely. Okay? I wouldn't do that. But that brings up a great point about appraisal. Okay, so one topic that we got to touch on briefly for the folks out there is this new construction appraisal problems we've been experiencing okay so i'm going to talk this is not about custom builds like we just talked about Mm -hmm. which have their own risks but we're talking about you bought a house new construction from a builder a builder uh let's say in 2020 well no (laughs) it it would be built by now guys let's face it it's low rise like we're talking about low rise i don't want to talk about condos today because that's a six year five year six year run and that's that problem is going to be more manifest later, like later this year and next year. Right. But the problem with if you bought a, a house 18 months ago or 20 months ago, and it's just completing now, you bought it at a high point, right? That's right. You bought it at a high point in the marketplace. You paid, you know, that 18, 20 months ago price. Mm-hmm. And price is everything to come down. That's right. Okay. So we've seen some big issues right big issues with appraisals for sure we saw this poor guy with an eight hundred thousand dollar difference like sweet jesus and that one the eerie part about that so what do i mean by that so he bought the house let's just use simple numbers he bought the house for 1.8 million and it's appraising for a million and some change okay holy moly that is a life-altering experience right well because you see you see people walking away from these large deposits now from the bill yeah, that was like a 300 grand deposit right yeah, okay yeah. now what happens after that is if you walk away and say no mr builder i'm not going to close i think i made a mistake here builder can sue you yeah and they will sue you you will and here's the thing they will win mm-hmm they will. Because folks, I'm, and I, I know there's a lot of armchair lawyers out there saying, well, how do you know that? Because I'm fucking old. That's why I'm really fucking old. I've seen this a thousand times, okay? Like, the case law in Ontario, particularly Ontario, is you lose every fucking time, yeah. okay? You have, a, you, have a, you have a legitimate contract. The house was finished to exactly your specifications you signed for in the contract. Contract was legit. You gave a deposit. It was 100%. The risk was on you that values might change. Yep. Okay, it wasn't on the builder, so you're in trouble. It's as yeah. simple as that. And we've seen a bunch of them in oh, the yeah. last uh, three months. Three months, like a yeah. bunch. We're gonna see some more next year too. I talked to lawyers who are seeing a lot more. Seen it a lot. It's not always eight hundred grand, but sometimes it's two hundred, three hundred. Okay. Now, do you think an assignment sale for a client like that would be a good solution? Hopeless, because what guy? Is the other thing is that house builders, like the low rise builders, they're not like condo builders. There's no assignment clause. Right. There's no assignment clause, first yeah. of all. And then, second of all, the rents don't work. You know, the rents don't work on a single family home or like a one, let's say that $1.8 million house mm-hmm. that it's somehow sold up by assignment for 1.5, even though the appraisal is 1.1. So I guess you're, that would never happen, right? right. Like a guy, who, but even imagine it did. You can't get the rents to work on 1.5 million, right? Yeah, that's just, right. So it's doomed. Yeah. Just doomed. So that, those, it's not a bad idea. Throw it out there. But here's the most interesting thing about that one. At least try. <laughs> I'll tell you the most interesting thing about that one is the builder offered to wait till spring. Oh, that's interesting. That tells me every single one of those houses is in trouble. Mm-hmm. The builder's hearing it from every single person they sold to. Yeah. Okay, that the appraisals aren't working. And the builder saying, "Well, it's okay if I if I've got fifty of these and five don't close is one thing. But if, if I got fifty of these and all fifty okay, don't close, yeah. that's a real fucking problem. Okay, yeah. like I mean, I I got I, it's not my problem too. So well, it yeah. becomes a cash flow issue for them too, right? Because they are they want to start building their next project. So oh, they're not building shit. <laughs> <laughs> <Not> now <laughs> there's gonna be trouble for a while. Okay, um, all right, so." 
So a question for you, how is that going to solve our housing crisis? <laughs> if, if builders can't build? Oh, I, I, it's a great point. And I post about it constantly. Like, I just even read literally this morning that new building in Canada is down 22% from the previous year. Yeah. 22% 22. this year down from 20. By the way, 2022 wasn't a great year either. It was down from 2021. Mm -hmm. And by the looks of things, the first six months at least of next year are going to be even worse. So yeah, there is fuckery galore here. Okay. Like yeah. it is just, yeah, <laughs> more people coming. Lots of people. Less houses. <laughs> okay. What the fuck? Is I heard that? that, you know, a lot of people that are coming now are being held up in hotels. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's like, when you read, read the stat that like, 400,000 people came in in a quarter. 430,000 people came in in three months. Okay. You just got to give up. Like, throw your hands in the air. This is crazy town. Well, okay. You wonder then why tent cities are going up all over the country. You yeah, know, it's, it's not, it's it's not a terrible. good thing. But that does bring us to our favorite part of the program. And you say? <laughs> <laughs> our favorite part of the program we're at now. My favorite part. What the actual fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, on. what the actual fuck? Yeah, yeah, it took you forever. <laughs> okay, Jesus Christ almighty. Well, that's all right. You're filling in. I appreciate it. <laughs> Jan just would have jumped into it, but that's all right. It's good. It's good. So what the actual fuck? So here's what I want to talk about very briefly, but I'm really fucking mad about it. We got every fucking young, and they just, they're not all young, but it's a lot of young. Okay, youngish. Not there's not old farts like me on TikTok or Reels or Stories and mortgage brokers too. Mortgage brokers are not innocent in this. All this fuckery online on TikTok, Reels, Stories, some YouTube. Everybody coming on saying, "Ho ho, the rates are coming down, so you better run out and buy right fucking now." They're dancing, they're singing, they're. Dumping, jumping around, they're pretending that they know, they're saying, and they're talking, and some of them are in like languages I don't understand. Okay. Like they're in different languages from different cultures. But they're all saying the same thing. Buy now. <laughs> Buy right fucking now because the prices are down, which they are. They are. And with these rates coming down, it's going to skyrocket to the moon. Okay. The prices are going to go crazy. This is your last fucking chance. Okay. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Realtors, mortgage brokers. Don't do that. Don't fucking do that. Okay. Like we don't know how bad this economy is going to get. We don't know. We okay. Don't. We have no idea how much the unemployment is going to grow. We don't have any idea how much, you know, how, how structurally difficult these next couple of years is going to be. You know, listen, if people want to buy a house, they can buy a house. I don't, you know, I'm never going to say don't buy forever, but for the love of God, don't go and do some dance and sing some song or tell some bullshit story that, hey, I know this is a fact. I know that rates will come down. As soon as rates start to come down, the price are going to go through the roof and you need to buy right now. The best time. I'm saving your life. And by the way, a couple of them, a couple of them on TikTok have said, if you don't buy now, you're stupid. Okay. Oh, yeah. I heard that. Okay. <laughs> One guy said, don't be a dummy. Don't make that mistake of your life and don't buy today. You got to start looking now because if you wait till May, April or May, the prices will already be up. Some crazy person said, yeah, well, we expect by the end of the year, prices will be up 25%. 2020, yeah, 2024, end of 24. Price on GTA, price on Ontario will be up 25%. Like, fuck you, honestly. Like, all you people are saying that shit. Quit fucking saying it. Stop it. Or at least TikTok. Well, what's TikTok going to do? There are a bunch of people over in China. They don't care. They don't okay, care. they don't give a damn. But, like, for the love of God, somebody should censor this shit. It's absolutely fucking nuts. Like, yeah, I get it, realtors. You're broke. I get it, young realtors. You're, you're fucked. I mean, you've gone... Some of you have gone for all year without a deal. Uh, and okay? I mean, a lot of them, some of them are looking for salary roles because. Absolutely. You know. Yes. You've taken up shit kicking. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Some of you mortgage brokers, hell, every mortgage broker has done, made less it, money. Yeah. They've taken a kicking, some less, some more. But it's never a reason to fucking lie. 
And then some of them are going to say, you don't know if it's a lie. What if it goes up? Then you're the liar. Well, fuck off. Okay. Like I'd rather give people conservative advice than promise that prices are going to go up 25%. And then they don't. (laughs) And they don't. They really don't. Okay. What if they go down? I'm not saying they will, but Christ. I mean, so my rant of the day, the what the actual fuck is wrong with you people on TikTok Quit that shit. Quit saying you got to buy today because prices are going through the roof because the rates have come down a little bit. Okay. Don't fucking do that. Stop that. (laughs) See you next week. If you like the pod, well, don't just sit there. Go to YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and all the other ones and like the pod. And don't forget to subscribe so we can keep being angry at mortgages and swearing about mortgages. Angry Mortgage could use your support.